What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because not only are we doing a deck profile but it's the beginning of Shark Week. What is Shark Week you guys might be asking? Well from Monday to Friday we're going to be focused on shark decks as well as water based decks as a whole showing off both the deck profiles and the combos that these decks can do and showing off how cool it can really be. Now if you guys do enjoy these kind of videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. Today's day one of Shark Week and and we're going to be doing a shark deck profile. This deck is going to be focused on the combo aspect of sharks. And in tomorrow's video, I'm actually going to be showing you guys what the combos look like. So I hope you guys enjoy Shark Week. And with that, let's get right into the deck profile. So just before we get into today's video, I do want to say welcome to Shark Week. And uh, here's our first video. It's sharks, of course. Now in tomorrow's video, we're going to be showing off the really cool combos you can do with this deck. And the really nice thing is that there's combos with literally one card, but then you can go with combos with two to three cards that put up insane boards. I'm talking you can put up triple totally awesome in a single turn and still play under Nibiru which is insane all right so let's get right into the deck profile here we're starting off with three buzzsaw shark of course buzzsaw is your one card combo you normal summon this you get another level four two level fours equals Bahamut shark and that equals totally awesome just the most simplistic combo you guys can do so you have to be playing three buzzsaw shark three lantern shark lantern is not too bad either he's really good in combination when you have other cards in your hand because you can special summon a level three four or five water monster from your hand when he's normal or special summon so it's really cool in that sense but again he's not your best normal summon but star shark is always going to be your best we're playing three ixies remora now ixies remora is going to be one of the most important cards in your combo just having this card gives you access to so many different plays so that's why you have to be playing three of the ixies remora this card just summons back two monsters from your graveyard for free when it's special summon which is absolutely insane then we're playing two of the silent sea nettle silent sea nettle is a very powerful card in this deck it's an extender for you it locks you into summoning water monsters for the turn you summon it however it's still a very powerful card it's a card that does help you extend into your rank fours but more importantly its graveyard effect says that you can banish it and then you can target three water monsters in your graveyard shuffle them back into the deck so this is kind of like your recursion for you if you run out of your totally awesomes run out of your bus star sharks you put them back into your deck and then you're good to go so that's why we're playing the two silent sea nettle it's not the most important card i wouldn't max out on it but i think two is a really good number then we're playing three tenny spirit shatana shatana is not a fish but it is is a water and it's a level four extender for you it's very very powerful if you just start your turn by summoning this you're in a really good position we have three silent angler of course another extender again this deck is just starter plus extender and if you have a starter plus an extender you can do full combo and the combos in this deck again they're really really powerful right so we're playing three more silent angler which is three extenders and then we're basically playing three more buzzsaw shark which is three beautiful princess this card essentially just gets you into your buzzsaw shark so if you don't open this you can open your beautiful princess and a lot of combos require your buzzsaw shark so if you don't open this this card kind of helps you be like okay well i'm going to use my normal summon on this which effectively is going to get me into buzzsaw shark and i'm good to go from there so that's why we're playing three of the beautiful princess and that's for the fish monsters i think this is all you're gonna need again you're playing starters and you're playing extenders that's all you're really gonna need for the monsters speaking of extenders we are playing the one instant fusion as well as two ready fusion these are just more extra deck extenders for you if you don't open any of your extenders here you get to open an extender with these cards right so just again more extenders for you another extender is white mirror i really like this card this card specifically is really good because yes it's just a monster reborn on face value but if you monster reborn something like a buzzsaw shark you can actually add another buzzsaw shark from your deck to your hand which gives you follow-up for the next turn so i I really like this card it can act as an extender for you but then it also acts as follow-up for you which is really powerful and we're playing two of the white mirror we're playing two desires you're playing three of all the important cards in your deck so i think desires is really important to play especially when you can open combo let's say you open buzzsaw shark plus an extender you can go desires after you do your full combo and then hope to draw into your hand traps hope to draw into your judgment and then just have extra cards to play with so that's why i really like playing two pot of desires and now a card that i was kind of like back and forth about is three raigeki the reason i decided to play with three ride geki even though this is a going first deck you really want to set up boards i found that this deck does have trouble breaking boards there's not a lot of cards in the extra deck that this deck gives you access to that helps you just break certain boards so for that reason i thought regeki would be very very powerful and very important especially let's say you're going first you set up your board even if you have a regeki in your hand if you set up two or three toads right which is very very doable in this deck and your opponent can't really play you're gonna have to get rid of your toads for the negates so you're kind of stuck in a position where you don't have that many monsters on your board so i 
I like something like Raigeki because you can clear your opponent's board, start fresh, and then you can go for game. So that's why I'm liking the three Raigeki. I don't think I change this out right now. Right now, I think it makes a lot of sense. But again, this is a card. These are the three slots, I would say, that if you guys wanted to swap them out, you guys definitely could swap these three cards out. And then actually, I'm going to talk about the fourth card over here, which is Called by the Grave. I really like Called by the Grave. Keep in mind that this deck loses pretty hard to something like Effect Veiler, loses pretty hard to something like Ash Blossom because Butunoful Princess is going to banish itself. If it gets Ash, then you're stuck with no monsters. Same thing with Buzzsaw Shark. If this gets hit with a Veiler, then you're kind of just stuck, right? So the thing is with Called by the Grave, it does help you against certain hand traps. But keep in mind, Ash and Veiler have been seeing a little bit less play in today's format, especially because they're not so great into the tail limits matchup. So the Called by the Grave can be really powerful, but it can also be substituted for a Harpy's Feather Duster if you're worried about any back row matchups. The reason I'm not playing Harpy's Feather Duster is because I noticed that back row is not that important right now, especially for a deck like this one. Yes, Sulik is a very powerful card, and if your opponent does have a Sulik for something like your Buzzsaw Shark going second, it can be pretty detrimental. So it's really up to you. Maybe this could be a Harpy's Feather Duster. Again, this is just one of those flex spots. These four cards right over here, I would say, are kind of flex spots, depending on what you think you're going to be playing up against. If you go to a Locals that plays a lot of back row, then you want to play more back row hate, right? If you go to a Locals that's playing only tier limits, then maybe something like Call by the Grave is a little bit better, all right? So I just wanted to give you guys that option. This, I think, is just the four cards. Like I said, you guys can swap these out for whatever you guys think are best, but I think right now it just makes a lot of sense to be playing these. Then we're playing some hand traps. We're playing three Ash as well as three DD Crow. Now you guys might be wondering, why are you not playing Bistials in a tier limit format? Everyone's playing Bistials. Well, the thing is with this deck is that it has some sort of limitation. So Sea Nettle, for example, locks you into water monsters. So if you summon this and your opponent goes Hobnus or they go any other Millers, you're kind of stuck because you can't actually use your Bistial monster effects. And then the same thing with Silent Angler, where if you activate your Silent Angler, you can't special summon monsters from your hand for the rest of the turn. And then you're kind of stuck with Bistials in your hand. Now, yes, Bistials are really powerful, but again, in a deck like this one, where you have cards that are literally going to stop you from playing the Bistial monsters, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So I think DD Crow just makes a lot more sense. It's pretty much a Bistial. It's the OG Bistial. It's just, you know, banish a card from the graveyard, stop the tier limit cards. It can be very power powerful in that sense. Another card you guys can play instead of Ash is uh, three Ghost Bell, and that also helps against the tier limit matchup. But I thought Ash was just really generically good in today's format. That's why I like playing the three Ash. You can also play three Imperm. That's another option for you. Again, the really cool thing about this deck is I would say everything after Desires. So Desires and upwards is the core of the deck. And then everything after Desires, except for a single card, which I'll talk about. But these cards over here, DD Crow, Ash Blossom, Raigeki, Called by the Grave. If you're watching this video in like six months and the format's completely different, then what you're going to do is you're going to just swap these nine, ten cards over here for the cards that are relevant against that format. So that's why I think this deck is really cool because if you're just playing this core, the core is not really gonna change. What you're gonna change is the cards that are really good into certain formats. So again, if Nibiru becomes really popular, you guys can play Nibiru. If hand traps like Droll on Lockbird, Veiler, Imperm become really popular, you can play those cards as well. So again, there's so many different cards you guys can play. Ghost Spell is an option, Imperm is an option, Veiler is an option. I just thought Ash was the most generic and I thought DD Crow was more specifically geared towards the tier limit match. Up. That's why I like playing these six. Then we're playing three Solemn Judgment. Now, I want to go first in this deck, like I said earlier, and I think Solemn Judgment is really important because Dark Ruler No More is a real thing in this format, and so is something like Evenly Matched. Now, yes, you can put up Negates to stop the Evenly Matched. However, putting up Negates to stop Dark Ruler is a little bit more tough, and so Solemn Judgment is really good in that sense because if you set up a board of two Totally Awesomes or three Totally Awesomes potentially, or Dweller plus two Toads, or you can set up a Draco Future plus a Toad, if you're setting up those kind of boards, you really want to protect it and something like solemn judgment is just the best protection for you so that's why we're playing three solemn judgment and that's it for the 40 card main deck like i said earlier this core over here is not going to be changing too much it's just these 10 cards over here the four cards over here as well as the six hand traps over here these are the only things that are really going to be changed i would honestly just keep the judgments let's, let's just do this everything solemn judgment and up you keep everything down here can be changed depending on what the format is looking like all right so 40 cards in the main deck very consistent i really really like this main deck let's move on to the extra deck now we are playing two rare fish this is our instant fusion as well as our ready fusion target we're playing three bahamut shark as well as three totally awesome you can actually do three and three in one turn and it's very easy to do it and so that's why we're playing three and three because you can actually put up three totally awesome in a single turn and it's absolutely insane when you do we're playing one baguska you don't go into this too often to be honest with you but when you do it can be very powerful we're playing the one dweller dweller is really good in this deck yes it's obviously really powerful against a tier limit matchup shutting out your tier limit opponents but the really cool thing about dweller is because it's actually a water deck you can actually make all your monsters gain 500 attack with dweller on the board we're playing the one vespinado this card is very powerful especially in one of the combos that i'll show you guys in tomorrow's video this 
card helps you get your Ixie's Remora off and it helps you go into Triple Toad. So this card is very important. We're playing one Zeus, of course. This card is really good. Again, this deck does struggle with breaking boards. And so you had Regeki in the main deck. Zeus is another card in the extra deck that does help you break boards. We're playing the one Utopic Future as well as the one Utopic Draco Future. These two cards are just very powerful in general. This is a Monster Negate. It's also a Snatch Steal. And that can be really powerful. 3000 attack is also really good. And then we're playing the one Eerie, the Water Charmer. And this card is just really powerful again because all your monsters are water monsters. But keep in mind, even something like Tier Limits will play water monsters. So you can actually play this, steal one of your opponent's Rule Colos, which is a water, steal a Rhino Heart, steal, uh, I can't remember what other water monsters are. I guess Mud Dragon, but it depends on how they summon the Mud Dragon. But you know what I'm trying to say. Point is, you can summon water monsters from your opponent's graveyard in today's format. And that can be really relevant because it puts another body on your side of the field that you can help push for OTK with, right? So that's it for the deck. 15 cards in the extra deck, 40 cards in the main deck. Like I said, tomorrow's combo video, you guys will understand why I'm playing cards the way I am and why I'm playing this deck the way I am. And again, these 10 cards over here always can be swapped depending on the format. If it's a back row heavy format, you play back row hate. If it's a format where Nibiru or Droll Unlock or Veiler or Imperm are relevant, you play those cards, all right? So these 10 cards are very, very flexible. I'm saying that you guys can play these for right now because these are also good against the Fluandries matchup, the Sprite matchup, and that's why I wanted to play these ones specifically. But again, if you guys wanted to play different ones, it works with me, it works with you, it works with the deck. It's it's a very powerful deck and I really like that this deck has so much flexibility. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That was my take on the shark combo build. Now keep in mind when you guys see the combos in tomorrow's video, it's going to be insane. All of it is going to make a lot of sense. You can really put up three Toad and a Utopic Draco Future in a single turn with just like two cards. It's actually such a crazy combo and I can't wait to show it to you guys in tomorrow's video. But if you guys do want to see it, make sure to like the video but more importantly, subscribe to the channel so you guys can actually see when I do these combo videos for the deck profiles that I put out. Again, welcome to Shark Week. I'm really excited. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. We're on the road to 10,000. By the end of the year, we want to get to 16,000. I know we can make it happen. So thank you guys all for watching. And with that, thank us. I don't know. Peace.